Hi there, thanks for tuning in. Today, we're going to be doing an analysis and valuation of MyTech Systems Inc. So let's get started. Now, MyTech Systems is essentially an identity and document verification software company. So they right now are targeting this identity verification market yeah, very, very heavily, especially with banks or other financial institutions, but also telecom companies or travel companies, healthcare, insurance, government, etc. And mainly when you see something like an app that has you record your face and match it to a document, that can be MyTech software. And this is a market that is going to grow by a whole freaking lot. It seems like it's going to grow to many billions of dollars and the compound annual growth rate of these markets is going to be over double digits, right? Or rather in the double digits. So yeah, that is important to know. They can capitalize on this very, uh, very much if they do things right. And what they do is that they have these compliance platforms. So for example, it can work with geolocation, it can do data checks, it can have a video interview, ID document validation, the liveness detection or the face and voice biometrics, as I said, maybe have your phone, take a picture of yourself, take a picture of your profile, etc. And also check through your email or on public databases, check the dark web, apparently. So it's a whole lot of things. And the whole point is they're selling this software or partnering uh, with financial institutions, insurance companies, governments, etc., to make this easier for them, to make this identity verification process easier for them. And they get a little commission out of it. So basically, this is a, a showing of how it works, the multimodal biometrics, where you take a selfie, authenticate your voice, etc., or document validation even. So you add your driver's license or a proof of address, and then they say, okay, this is wonderful. Let's go. You you now have an account because we could verify everything is in order, right? And it could work with, for example, Chase Bank. And that's my tech software, really. So that's essentially how it works. However, the greatest piece of income for them is actually their legacy software, which is validating checks. When you scan a check with a bank app, the software that validates it can oftentimes be my techs, right? And this is a segment that is flat and is going to decline in the future. So right now, the big growth segment is going to be this identity verification, while the checks, while it makes more money right now, is going to be flat or declining or declining very fast. It just depends because people are using checks less and less, really, um, especially now as things like Zelle, Pe PayPal, Venmo are more popular, right? So yeah, this is just an interesting thing to note. Most of their uh, business is in a legacy part of the business, but most of their growth is in here, as with a lot of companies, right? So they have a bunch of partners, Chase Bank, for example, TD Ameritrade, DocuSign, MasterCard, Axos Bank, all sorts of stuff, right? Equifax even, Credit Karma, Accenture, huge companies, right? And the cool thing about their moat is that they don't have, uh, these companies, these clients, don't have much of an incentive to switch from my tech software. First of all, having that sort of software all of a sudden leave, even for a little bit, can be pretty catastrophic, especially if you require constant identity verification. For example, Clear, which is what passes you through TSA quicker when you're in an airport. They all will always need the identity verification working, so switching can have a pretty big cost. Or, in other words, they just have a moat. My tech software has a moat because the cost of switching can be pretty big and there are no huge competitors right now um, to, who, to compete with my tech, right? So that's important to note. Their moat is fantastic. Now let's talk about their financials a little bit. So in the 12 months ended September 30th, they we see revenue growth pretty consistent, pretty large. So usually above 10%, right? So pretty stellar revenue growth. This makes sense, right? They're making a lot of money from this identity verification and it's in the best interest of everyone, especially of, as everything digitizes to have this up and running, right? All of a sudden, you don't need to go to a physical location for a cashier or an employee to say, okay, this is the person I'm talking to. You can theoretically just do it on your phone, right? But 
there needs to be software for this, right? And it needs to be accurate. It needs to basically tell you, okay, we're going to prevent fraud even more so than having a person physically look at you. So the growth is huge. And I do think the global situation in 2020 probably accelerated that even more. And with that growth also comes higher cost of revenue in a lot of ways, higher selling and marketing, higher research and development, and higher general administrative expenses. However, you're still left with, at the end of the day, increasing operating income, sort of. Well, increasing operating costs. Operating income has increased, but in 2022 has faltered a little bit. And the net income after taking everything away is much, much less than the revenue. And as I said, it's because the growth is still in a part of the company that isn't necessarily as profitable. The identity verification isn't as profitable for my tech as it is uh, for as the check verification is. Okay, so based on these numbers, I can make a model. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take revenue predictions that I can find in Yahoo Finance. We have four analysts that predicted the revenue for the current year 2023 and 2024 for my tech systems. So for the current year, it'll be 170.24 million for the next year, it'll be all around $180 million. And I can plug this into a discounted cash flow model. So this is my model. And what I'm doing is I'm basically saying around 20% of the revenue is going to get turned to free cash flow, which is in line with their historical operating free cash flow margins. So I'm going to plug that in, I'm going to say, um, I'm going to plug in those numbers for 2023 and 2024 for revenue for 2025 and 2026. I'm just growing free cash flow by 5%. And then I'm going to say, I want a required rate of return of 11%. That's 1% more per year than the market. So over time, that adds up to be a lot. And then a perpetual growth rate of 2%. Basically, this company is going to grow by 2% for perpetuity. This can be a little low. I'm going to be on the conservative side, right? I'm going to divide it by the total number of shares out. And I get a fair value of nine dollars and four cents per share however we still have to add the net debt that my tech has so they have 27 million dollars of debt and subtracting that from the fair value then we have a fair value post debt of eight dollars and 44 cents however something very important to note is that free cash flow generally includes stock-based compensation which is the stock you give to employees right or to uh, management as compensation that is not part of cash flow. That is an expense. So we have to expense that. And what you'll see with a lot of high growth tech companies is that a lot of their free cash flow is stock based compensation. So we have to subtract that from the free cash flow number. And that changes the calculus and it changes it like this. So essentially, all of a sudden now, free cash flow is lower across the board, right? And the free cash flow margin is also going to be lower. So instead of 20% of revenue getting turned to free cash flow, it's about 11% now. So with those same numbers with that same growth rate, I'm plugging in the new free cash flow numbers, the free cash flow margin of 11%, because that's discounting stock based compensation. And I don't see their stock based compensation necessarily um, stopping anytime soon. So with those numbers, same thing, 11% required rate of return, 2% perpetual growth rate, and then subtracting the debt, we end up with a fair value of $4.37 with net debt included. Almost half of what we were predicting here, $8.44 to $4.37. So where's my tech stock price right now? Wow. So essentially, if you've invested in MyTech in the last five years, you haven't been very happy. If you invested in the middle of 2021, you're definitely not happy at all. What is happening right now with MyTech that I'm talking about it? So the big thing is the AI. So let's start talking about the moat. MyTech has an impressive moat, and given the fact that it is the only partner of many institutions and they don't really have an incentive to change, that's awesome for MyTech. They have reliable income right there, and as they make their identity verification software more profitable, that is even more reliable income, right? It also stands to benefit a lot from AI and increased adoption of new identity verification methods. So MyTech right now can potentially take advantage of AI and all its capacities, right? It's one of those stocks that can be identified as like the next AI big thing. And if so, people are going to want it. The potential... Um, income that they're going to make from AI is going to be a lot because maybe their operating costs are a lot lower once AI really makes them like 
the best uh, identity verification, right? It'll, it'll lower their operating costs. It may uh, make them even more solid of a partner for even more companies. Even It may make them even more wanted. And growth rates are pretty impressive with MyTech, right? They are generally in the double digits and they should stay impressive for the long run, though by how much is still uncertain, right? Especially if you see these analyst estimates for 2023, there's a really tight range. It's between almost 170 million to 171 million dollars. So that's a pretty tight range. But then the margin opens, right? It, we go from 175 million to 187 million dollars. That's a way wider range. That's 12 million dollars, basically. So growth, we know it's going to happen. We know it's going to be great. But by how much? That, there's the devil in the detail. Because when you're buying into a stock, you're also buying into the future cash flows and those may vary greatly depending on the growth rate. So, my tech could be potentially overvalued, especially considering that half of free cash flow in 2022 was through stock-based compensation, and it's always been an important chunk of free cash flow, and that's why it's important to uh, to re reduce it, to subtract it from free cash flow, because that's an expense, that's not really cash you're getting. If the check market declines faster than expected or AI does not deliver the exponential growth that is being expected, it could be easy to be caught with an underperforming business. That is to say, my tech may still grow, but if right now uh, the price, say, is forecasting a 20% growth for many, many years and instead it just grows by 5 to 10%, then you may be caught with a very underperforming business. Valuation matters and my tech will need to grow at a certain rate to justify price increases, right? So... My question here for you really is, what's your appetite for risky growth? Because my tech has a lot of growth ahead of it, but it just depends by how much it's going to grow. And that number is pretty uncertain at this moment. So what's your appetite for risk? What's your appetite for growth? Do you want to find the companies that are the most undervalued, right? Or do you want to find something that is a little riskier, but maybe has excess returns, right? We don't know how much AI is going to get done for my tech, but if AI really accelerates everything that MyTech is doing, growth could be even more than forecasted, right? And then you'll have a company that will give you very exponential returns. So what's your appetite for risky growth? Based on this, only you can answer whether or not you would invest in MyTech. All right, with that said, I thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps me a lot. I appreciate it a ton. And if you want me to look at any particular stock, please comment down below. I would be happy to read your comments. With that said, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.